U posljednje vrijeme svjedoci smo sve više i više primjera kada ponašanje svjetskih zvijezda pod utjecajem alkohola, droga ili tableta završi nekim velikim skandalom ili u najgorem slučaju smrću. Posljednji slučaj koji je šokirao svijet bilo je ponašanje Mela Gibsona koji je u alkoholiziranom stanju vrijeđao i gotovo fizički nasrnuo na majku svog djeteta. Upravo smo zato posjetili najslavniju kliniku za odvikavanje na svijetu Promises u kojoj smo ekskluzivno za red karpet saznali kako to izgleda kada zvijezde dođu na odvikavanje. People who are working in the entertainment industries, music and, and movies, don't live on regular schedules. They often work very long hours for days on end and then they have periods of, of idleness where they aren't doing much of anything. And during those periods of peak activity, they frequently are sleep deprived, they're trying to push through their tiredness, they're trying to achieve a level of emotional uh, intensity to be in their role or to create their, their album that um, makes them feel like they need drugs to support that. And so they're in a culture of people who are using drugs. What is the most common addiction problem within celebrities that come here? Far and away it's alcohol. Alcohol is the number one drug of abuse both in celebrities and non-celebrities. And it's probably because we have a culture that for the most part accepts alcohol uh, use at the beginning. So when people abuse alcohol, they're much less likely to be chastised or criticized for it because alcohol is so accepted in the culture and the society. The thing that's changed the most in the last 10 years is we're seeing a lot of prescription drug abuse, where people are getting prescriptions from their doctors for narcotic medications like Oxycontin and Vicodin and Codeine and are abusing a lot of opiates that didn't happen 25 years ago. Broj celebova koji su imali problema s ovisnošću gotovo je veći od onog koji nisu. Lindsay Lohan, Paris Hilton, Mike Tyson, Nicole Richie, Britney Spears, Robert Downey Jr., Drew Barrymore, Robbie Williams, Amy Winehouse i Whitney Houston samo su neki od okorijelih hollywoodskih primjera, a mnogi su slučajevi završili smrću. Prisjetimo se samo Michaela Jacksona, Heatha Ledgera, Anna Nicole Smith, Corea Hayma ili Brittany Murphy koji su preminuli jer im je srce odkazalo. common cause of death is respiratory depression, that the breathing center in the brain is depressed by the drugs like opiates and sedative hypnotic drugs and by alcohol and so the person stops breathing and they go into circulatory collapse and that's why they die. In some cases people die of alcohol poisoning, they just drink so much that they have heart failure from alcohol. But the most common reason is, is they combine the drugs that then all cause them to stop breathing. Spekulacije o korumpiranim doktorima koji uzimaju novce zvijezdama te im za uzvrat pripisuju ljekove potvrdio je slučaj doktora Conrada Murraya koji je optužen za ubojstvo iz nehaja Michaela Jacksona. Nedavno je i glazbenik i bivši ovisnik Eminem otvoreno progovorio o tom problemu te doktore zvijezda nazvao najvećim kriminalcima. Most uh, celebrities who abuse drugs abuse multiple drugs and they use them in unsafe ways. So it's not just that they're taking 
uh, OxyContin, they're drinking alcohol, they're taking sleeping medications, and a lot of the overdoses and deaths that we see are because the doctor may be telling themselves that they're prescribing responsibly, but the person they're giving it to is not behaving responsibly. They're mixing and matching all the drugs that are available to them. You look like a fucking bitch on heat, and if you get raped by a pack of niggers, it'll be your fault, all right? Because you provoked it, you are provocatively dressed all the time with your fake boobs you feel you have to show off in tight outfits and tight pants so that you see your pussy from behind. And that green thing today was enough. That's provocative. You know, sometimes when some celebrity admits to the world that he or she has a problem, after gets even more PR and more job. How do you comment that and how bad is that for young people who think of them as a role model? We know that people emulate celebrities. And so when they see celebrities drinking or getting high or taking opiates or they read about them, that we know that it influences young adults. And for years, the smoking industry increase the number of people smoking by hiring celebrities to appear on camera and to appear in public smoking because they knew that people would want to emulate. Iako je posjed u klinike Promises nemoguće pristupiti jer je odvojen, ograđen i maksimalno zaštićen, mnoge priče o poznatima koji su se liječili tu poput Lindsay Lohan ili Britney Spears su procurile u medije i to zbog toga jer nekada zvijezde same žele takav PR. No kako još uvijek postoje oni rijetki koji se baš i ne žele pohvaliti svojim velikim problemom, paparaci su u stanju svašta napraviti kako bi se domogli neke ekskluzive. What was the worst case of the reporters that have tried to get a story of celebrities that is here in the rehab? We had one situation. We had a reporter trying to climb over our fence, and we literally had to bring security in to prevent that from happening. Uh, but we also have a situation where, you know, we've had people who come and we have private parklands behind, public parklands behind the pr property, where they'll walk literally miles into this public property to try to take pictures by shooting down on the property. I think we've had helicopters where they tried to take pictures in the past. Klinika Promises je jedna od najskupljih u svijetu. Minimum boravka u njoj je 31 dan, što košta 55 tisuća dolara, a cijena se može popeti i do 90 tisuća dolara. Pristup liječenja je individualan ili grupni, a sastoji se od kombinacije meditacija, vježbanja, akupunkture i psihoterapije. No za većinu selebova nije tako lako proći kroz proces odvikavanja i u istinu se i odviknuti. Have they ever tried to sneak something in? Well, we have people who arrive here who don't want to get treated and who try to sneak drugs in and we will we'll discover. We, we search people's possessions when they come in, but then they'll have friends come and visit them a few days later and then we'll discover needles in their room and paraphernalia. Those people are jeopardizing not just themselves, but the entire program and those are the people we have to discharge. How do you control them once they're finished? Well, we can't control them when they're done. What we try to do is give them the tools to live without drugs or alcohol, and then we monitor them. So we do telephonic monitoring. We call them every week for the first month, and we call them monthly thereafter. And, and there are certain places you probably don't go. You probably don't go to big openings and big shows in the first what year. What if you have to go? Well, that, that's the challenge. So frequently what we'll do is have celebrities go with a sober coach or a sober companion who keeps them honest, so that kind of reminds them that, that they're there because they have to be there because it's their job, but it doesn't mean they have to drink. Ono po čemu se klinika promisi su posljednje vrijeme najviše proslavila je jedna neobična terapija, terapija liječenja konjima, inače omiljena među svjetskim celebovima, kada iz ponašanja konja možemo iščitati mnogo toga o karakteru jedne osobe. How do they help people? Um, a, a number of different ways. They are highly intuitive, so they pick up what a person is truly feeling and what is going on for them in the inside, not necessarily what they're showing us on the outside. We've had people come in who've lost a husband 10 years ago, started drinking, and really put their grief off. And then they get in the arena with the horse and they realize, you know, when they're walking the horse around or something that they need to let go of. S obzirom na veliki broj nesretnih slučajeva među zvijezdama, postavlja se pitanje jesu li lažna prijateljstva i površne vrijednosti u tom nesretnom svijetu velikog novca i slave zapravo najveći neprijatelji osjetljivih pojedinaca. Kako bi ozbiljnije shvatili koliko je ovaj problem prisutan kod naših idola, prisjetit ćemo se samo onih koji su nas nekada uveseljavali, a sada počivaju u miru. And 
and I thank God I'm alive. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you.